Hey there, so we're going to do an example of section 3.4, an application of revenue, cost, and profit. So the problem says suppose that the revenue function and the cost function for a particular product are these two um, for 0 less than x less than 100. So then x is the number of items, number of units being produced, so that means between 0 and 100 units, this is the revenue function and this is the cost function. So part A says find the number of units that must be produced to break even. So the break even point is where the, the revenue and the function and the cost function meet. So for part A, break even is when the revenue function is equal to the cost function. So here we want r of x, so 300x minus x squared to equal, so that's our revenue function, to equal the cost function, 65x plus 7,000. Um, and so we need to solve for x. So looking at the highest degree, this is a degree 2, so it's a quadratic, so to solve quadratics, anything higher than 2, we have to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to move things. Since this is negative, I usually don't like negatives with my squares, so we're going to move everything to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 300x from both sides. I'm going to line up my like terms, and I'm going to add x squared. I don't have an x squared over here, so I'm going to add it to a placeholder. So on the, <coughs> on the left side we get 0, and on the right side we're going to get um, 300 minus 65, which is 235, but it's negative, so negative 235x plus 7,000 plus x squared. So rearranging it so that you go from largest degree, so x squared, to smallest. So second degree, first degree, and zero degrees, which is the constant term. And so we want to solve this now for x. Um, so either we look for two numbers that multiply to 7,000 and add up to 135, this might be kind of hard to do, or we use the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula, back from the review of chapter 1, says that x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. As long as you have an equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So in this case, we do have 0 equals ax squared bx c. So for our particular example, a is 1, b is negative 235, and c is 7,000. So we're going to have x equals negative b. So the opposite of negative 235 is positive 235, plus or minus the square root of 235 square, negative 235 square, minus 4a, which is 1, times c, which is 7,000, all over 2a, 2 times 1. So you are definitely going to want a calculator here. Now if you were able to factor it, then that's fine. I just right off the bat couldn't see two numbers that multiply to 7,000 7, and add up to negative 235. They both have to be negative to get a negative there and a positive there. But so I'm just going to use the quadratic formula with the calculator. So 235 square is 55,225 minus 4 times 7,000, which is 28,000. I wrote it like a little typo there. Um, so 55,225 
minus 28,000 divided by 2. So we get 235 plus or minus, and then 55,225 minus 28,000 gives us 27,225. And if you take the square root of that, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit it in this page here. It was going to be 235 plus or minus. In your calculator, take the square root of your answer, 165. So it did factor because we got a nice whole number there. Um, and so when you do the quadratic formula, you get the plus or minus. And we want to see what kind of number we're going to get. So this is going to be x equals, so it's either 235 plus 165 over 2, or it's 235 minus 165 over 2. So when you do both of these, so 235 plus 165 divided by 2 is 200 or 235 minus 165 and then divided by 2, that's 35. So which one of these do we take? So we go back to our exam, to the problem and notice that it says for x between 0 and 100, these are the functions. So we got x's that are Hmm. Oh yeah. So we got an x that is 200, so that exceeds the 100. Remember, x has to be a number between 0 and 100, so 200 is too big. So x equals 200 is too large. So it cannot be. So x equals 35 x equals 35 falls in the range between 0 and 100, so that's the one that we're going to take. Um, so the break-even point is um, 35 units. So when you produce 35 units, um, the revenue and the cost is going to be the same. So anytime after that, um, your revenue is going to hopefully increase. So that's um, doing a break-even analysis. Now part B of this problem said find the profit function. So the profit function is profit is revenue minus cost. So the revenue Remember, r of x was 300x minus x squared, and the cost, c of x, was 65x plus 7,000. So the profit, p of x, is going to be the revenue minus the cost. So in this case, is going to be 300x minus x squared, that's the revenue, minus the cost. Now because my cost has two terms, anytime I have a function that has more than one term, I'm going to use parentheses. So 65x plus 7,000. Right, because I'm subtracting that whole quantity, so I want to make sure I capture that in the subtraction. So my profit is 300x minus x squared and then distribute minus 65x minus 7,000. Combine like terms. My only like terms here are the x's so 300x minus 65x and so I'm gonna have a negative x squared and 300 minus 65 is 235, so plus 235x minus 7,000. 
and that is the profit equation. So when you combine these, you get the 235. And always you want to write things in decreasing order from degree. So largest degree and then down until you get to the constant. Now, because our break-even analysis gave us that the number of items needed to break even was 35 units, um, if you put 35 in here, you should get zero. The profit will be zero at the break-even point. Okay, so I hope that that helps explain um, revenue and cost and some quadratics. And again, you don't need to use the quadratic formula here if you're able to, to factor that out. So in this case, based on our answers, looks like that equation would factor when we do 200 times 35. So 200 times 35 is 7,000, and when you add those, you get 235. Of course, they will both be negative to get a positive product and a negative sum. Um, but when you can't think of the factors on the spot, you can always fall back on the quadratic formula. Um, another example that I had is number 58 from the book. So where you have to actually come up with the equations. Um, I'm going to hold off on doing this one. I'll let you try to work it out on your own. And um, then we'll talk about it. Actually, did I do? Okay. So I will stop there. And we'll do this on Monday.